Tori here, and for today to start a new reading vlog, it is February 1st, which means it is romance-themed reading time in this house, in this room. Um, I really like starting the month off with a new book. I try to do that every single month. Sometimes I'm not as successful, but I do try to do that. So, because I'm focusing on some reading some romance reads, and I do have off today, because it's Lunar New Year, I want to try to get as much reading done as I can. So, if you have watched my TBR at this point, you knew I am, you know, I'm going to try to tackle Crescent City. I doubt I'm going to finish this and like, like, I'm not going to read this all at one time because I feel like I can't bring this book to work with me because it's a behemoth. But, I really am excited to dive into it. I know that it's a very, very romance-heavy fantasy. I have thoroughly in the past really liked Sarah J Moss's writing style and this book is like over 800 pages so what I would love to do is finish the, read the first 100 pages today um and just sort of see where I'm going and see what that is but I did wind up filming yesterday so I actually prep film a bunch of videos which is really really nice and I did my YouTube stuff and my Instagram stuff and my blog stuff so all that stuff is done which is nice um, I'm also thinking of doing a romance week on my channel and just doing a couple of romance videos. Um, we'll see. Um, but I would like to start this. It is 9.04. I woke up later than I normally do. I normally wake up at 5 o'clock, but I woke up at like 7 o'clock, which is a nice break. So I'm going to dive into this and try to read. Ooh, I have to show you these end papers. I think this is a Barnes & Noble edition. Um, but I'm going to read, try to read about, maybe about 50 pages, but I'm supposed to head out and go, go do some errands. Um, we will see if that actually happens, but that is the plan for today is just to read, catch up on my YouTube queue, um, maybe watch some legacies tonight and just enjoy my day off. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go start this. Wish me luck and I will update you guys when I can. Bye friends. Hi friends, we're here and back. It's about one o'clock, so. I didn't want to bring a bunch of errands. Um, as I picked up Crescent City, I realized I should probably read that when I'm not having a lot of background noise. So I did, when I was running around with my mom, read the first 50 pages in The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. I do want to focus on that. It's probably going to happen when I start not watching YouTube videos and I have a couple to watch. So it might, might be later tonight or even tomorrow. We'll see. This book is just really, really cute. It follows this girl named June. It takes place in England, which I love books set in small English towns or small towns in general. And she is the um, the assistant librarian in this building. Um, and it's like a half page of a bunch of people that like use this library daily and they kind of come into her life. But when the library sets to close, she has to sort of team up with all the patrons to sort of save the day. There's a potential romance in the background with someone she knew from high school um and there is a grief element because she just recently lost her mom and has since then stayed super isolated sorry it's a little bit glary but i really am liking it so far so i read about 52 pages i'm gonna read a little bit more as i'm watching Haley and bookland i love her videos um and when i get up another 50 pages i'll give you guys a more solid update but so far it's really really cute i love the library as a setting if you know anything about me i love books about books and reading so this is another one about libraries in specific so i'm excited to see where this book ends and I'm gonna go read and I'll talk to you guys when I have read a bit more. Bye friends. I'm gonna do a quick update. I did wind up reading about 100 pages in The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. I'm really liking this. I just think it's like delightful. It definitely is a more self-discovery, I will say that, but like I like that and I think probably you might be able to classify it as more women's fiction, but the heart of the story is definitely about a library and what it does for people. And as someone who loves libraries and, like, goes to them all the time, I just like that, like, this small town library is more about just books. And it also is a little bit more complicated because June is put in a really, really bad position. She can't work against the library for fear of losing her job. Um, but she's all the one. So that's another part of the story. There is a potential romance plot element to it, but the, the library is definitely at the heart of the story. The one thing I love about this book, normally when I read books about libraries and books, the books they mention in the book don't really exist. Freya made a choice to make the books actually exist, and I'm liking that because I can add books to my TBR, which I always love. So that was that. that's like a fun addition to the story for me. But I didn't want to end, 
I'm gonna say this is like a little bit over 300 so my goal is to read another 50 more pages and see how many YouTube videos I can get done I have like 29 which is not as much as it has been in the past so I'm gonna read a little bit more watch my YouTube videos and I will report back when I read about 50 more pages but I like how the library is almost like a little community and that is really really fun there's also political corruption going on but definitely the library is at the heart of the story and I'm really liking that so I will report back and I'll read there for sorry I will definitely tell you if I think it's more women's fiction or more romance but I'm okay with either to be very honest with you um but yeah so far I'm really liking it though and it's just a very a very, very cute read so perfect when I have some background noise on to read so I'm gonna go read a little more of this and then I'll report back it's 3.31, which is when I normally get home from work, so I accomplished a lot today. <laughs> but I wound up getting up to page 151 in the Last Chance Library. I'm really liking it. I love that it has, like, you know, it, it is very much focused on this small English town, and I like books about that. I always say I would, my dream place would be to have, like, a part-time house in, like, a summer house in, like, a small town. Because I just like the dynamics quite a bit. But I just like that all these people are sort of trying to teaming up to try to save this library. And they're all sort of going on about what the library means to them. And there are definitely some villains in this story, I will say that. So they're not all good people, but I'm liking it. I really like the main character thing. She's very isolated, very much like trapped in the, like just trapped. She feels very, very stuck. Ever since her mom died, she's really not willing to like let anyone in. She's not willing to like move past that grief. Um, and she really isolates herself, um, which reminds me a little bit of the chaos of standing still. Like, she's very much in, like, one spot. But I do really like all the side characters in the story. And it definitely, I would say, does have a romance subplot. But it's definitely not the focus. It's more of women's fiction, I would say. But I'm okay with that. I mean, if it's women's fiction set in a library, I'm okay. But I like that all the other side characters are really getting involved to save this library. And I'm curious to see how the story will wind out. But I have, my goal is to read at least 50 more pages and see where we are time-wise. But I'm also making my way through my YouTube queue. I only have, only, but like I only have 26 videos left, which is not that bad. So I call that a success. So I will talk to you guys when I read up to page 200 and we'll check, we'll check back. But so far, I'm really liking it and happy that I picked it up. A lot to make me tear up when I read a book, but this book did that. Oh my gosh, sorry, it's so glary. But it is just a delight. It's just such a sweet story, and I think it really is, like, you know, finding who your people are, and I think in finding, like, a library community is something that I just really like, and the small town element to it, how all these people who are so different have this connection to this library, and it's just so sweet. Like, some of, the, there's, like, again, I don't, I rarely, t I mean, I'm trying to get better at it, but, like, I just really am a quote person. I love quotes about reading and books, so... There's no surprise that this book has quite a few tabs on it as well, but it's just very, very fun. It's just very, very delightful. Again, I would definitely say this is, like, more women's fiction and more, like, self-discovery novel than a romance, but there is a romance hiding in this book that I really am enjoying. Um, our main character is sort of a li little bit oblivious, I will say, and that is sort of how I always am, so it's just funny to see it represented. Um... But again, I just, I think she's a very, very fun character, dealing with a lot, but I just think that, like, all these characters sort of team up to sort of save the library, and that is something I'm really liking. Um, but I am going to go get ready for work tomorrow, because this is a Tuesday, and we do have to work the rest of the week, but, like, taking the day off was just, it was so needed, so necessary. Um, but yeah, my goal is to read at least to page 250 tonight. Um, I didn't, like, watch anything last night because I was working until, like, late. Not working, but, like, doing editing stuff. So, I'm going to go get ready for work tomorrow, figure out what I'm doing, and then I'll check in when I read about 50 more pages. All right, friends, let me do a quick check-in. I did get to page 257 in the Last Chance Library. It's really emotional, and, like, I think that's sort of the point because... You have a character that's dealing with a lot of grief, but you also have a character that's sort of trying to find her own footing. There is a romance that is, like, pep pep peppered through this, but it really is about find about saving a place that you love and the beauty of libraries and reading and books. And I just really like June as a character. It's, it's just, it's very, very sweet. 
Um, there are like, you know, grief trigger warnings. There is some other stuff happenings in this book, but I'm really, really liking it. And I like how she, he, she's finding a found family. And I think that that's something in this book that I'm really enjoying because she really is me. She, she's very, very isolated. You know, she lives, you know, she works and she has all these people, but she never really considered them a family until like this book. She really hasn't realized that these people are her family. So I'm not curious to see how they save, how the how the book ends, like if they wind up saving the library or not. I've read some library books and books for books where it goes one way and some books where it goes the other way. So I'm curious how this one shakes itself out. I really hope that they save it, but I won't spoil you about that. But we will see. It's really, really sweet. I definitely teared up in the middle of this book for sure. But I'm going to go try to read about 50 more pages, and then I'll give you guys a solid check-in, and we'll just waste seconds. I'm pleased to report that I have finished The Last Trans Library by Farrah Sampson. I'm really happy that I picked this book up. If I was just going off of feelings and emotions, I would say this book is definitely a five-star read for me. I'm probably going to give it a five stars on Goodreads because I really loved it. I love that it was really about found family and just the whole element of saving the library, the book ending was really really interesting the ending was not what I was sort of expecting but if you're looking for a romance this is not the book for you um, I would definitely classify this more as women's fiction with a big focus on the small town element and I just think it was more of a self-discovery novel which I like but it won't if you're like a big romance reader and you're looking you did get a HOA I guess but you know it was the romance was okay. It was really more about um, June and her journey through the grief of losing her mother and sort of like the after effect of that. But I liked it. I thought it was really, really fun. Very, very cute. I really loved all the side characters and it ended in a way I wasn't sort of expecting, but still really enjoyed it. Um, so tomorrow I did wind up getting a virtual copy of um, House of Blood for Sarah J Maas, so I have that, and I also do have my e-arc that I might read. I don't know what I'm going to be in the mood to read tomorrow. It really, really just depends. I'm going to try to read House of Earth and Blood, um, but I also have my You Holly's Companion book, so one of those will get started, but one book down for February, so that's good. I will talk to you guys tomorrow, and we will chat about what I wound up reading. Um, I will hopefully have a bunch of listening time tomorrow when I'm grading essays, so I can get some audiobooks done as well. But I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, friends. Laura here. I'm back. It's been a bit of a crazy two days. I started yesterday thinking I probably had a toothache, um, which made sense like with all of my symptoms, but unless I also have a toothache on top of my sinus infection, um, it's just really hard to focus. I was, I was, I'm trying to finish reading Crescent City. Well, I'm not finished. I'm like, 20% into it, like maybe like 10% and I'm really liking it. I'm just having a really hard time focusing on the characters and reading in general. Um, I feel really bad for the audiobook that I'm listening to, The Perilous Undertaking by Dana Rayburn, because I feel like I'm not like grasping the plot very, very well. Um, it happened to me with sinus infections. It's like a sharp pain like down the side of my face and I'm just like a little bit out of it and a little bit dazed, which tends to happen. Um, and I actually had a sinus infection like before I went to Disney, like a couple, like a couple weeks before I went to Disney. Um, and it wasn't like this. It was just a lot of like stomach stuff cause I had a lot of mucus. So again, coming, we're still stuck in a pandemic, but like our, my, our immune systems are just shot. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to pick up Holocox by Jessica Townsend. I struggled a little bit with Wondersmith, to be very honest, but I just want like a fantasy world that I can sort of escape to. I know it does have to do with something sort of like a pandemic, but I'm okay with that. So I'm going to see how I feel, how if like reading this will make my headache worse or make my headache better. I was reading on my Kindle all through like, um my commute back and forth and that might have made my headache a little bit worse but I'm gonna try to pick this up and see how I'm doing I'm undecided if I'm gonna go to work tomorrow it just depends on if this pain in my eye vanishes if the pain in my eye vanishes I will probably go to work if it doesn't I probably won't 
um, just because it's just a lot to do go. You can probably see me if I look super tired. Um, but I just got home from the urgent visit. They gave me medicine, the same medicine they gave me like a month ago. So hopefully it does something. But I'm going to go try to escape into a fantasy world for a little bit. And if I'm feeling better, I will definitely update you guys. But I do feel like a little bit better. I still have a pretty bad headache. But actually reading sort of helped because I wasn't staring at a screen. Um, but I did read the first 50 pages in Holopunk, The Hunt for Morgan Cray. Um, I remember really loving Nevermore, and I struggled a little bit with Wondersmith. Um, but this book is just a fun, I really like the world. Again, I'm very much a big middle grade reader. I always have, and the longer the series, the better. Um, but this is set at the end of term, so I'm curious where the story goes. It's a very, very quick read, too. But um, basically, if you know nothing about it, um, you follow this girl named Morgan Crow, and in her town, or in her little, like, life, if you are born on an odd day, I think, or I think it's maybe, like, if you're born on a certain day, you're considered an odd person, um, and that brings bad luck to, like, your town and your community, and when she believes she's going to die, um, they all die on a certain day, on, like, their 12th birthday, I think, she's believes she's going to die, she gets taken to this magical world, um, and it has a found family element. It really does remind me of a Harry Potter story, like that myth, but with real classes, which I liked. And I really loved all the various side characters and stuff. I mean, I always talk about Harry Potter, but I'm really loving the Keeper of the Lost City series. And this might be a series, like as it gets farther, that will be like Keeper, because I remember reading the first three books of Keeper and really growing to love it so the book too I struggled with a little bit but I'm hopeful that this book will just take me even more into the world and I will really enjoy it so I am going to go get a little bit of a snack maybe that will help my headache I still am undecided about tomorrow I'm gonna see how I feel in the morning um but I will talk to you guys tomorrow I'm probably gonna eat a little bit and watch a little bit of Good Witch because it's nice and relaxing and I will talk to you guys tomorrow morning hey friends or tomorrow when I come home from work if I do go I just want to do a quick update. I am at my house. So I did just read about a couple of chapters of Crescent City. So right now I'm up to page, I did pick up my physical book because I forgot that I had one. Um, I'm 80, 88 pages into this. It's a very interesting book, I will say that. Right off the bat, it is a super complicated world. You're basically following this character named Bryce and she is half fae, half human. Um, and she has a best friend who is a wolf, but when a tragedy occurs, I mean, it does say it on the back flap, but I won't spoil it. She is sort of sent into a mystery. That's where I can see sort of the book coming. So this book is massive. It is massive. The second book is coming out this month, which means everyone is probably reading that, but I have to read this because I haven't read it yet, but I am really liking it. I have a feeling it's going to be very, very romance heavy, which is sort of why I picked it up this month. And that is why it's on my TBR. Um, I did read last night. I think I updated you guys before I head to bed or headed to a rest for a bit. Um, I read about 53 pages in Holopox. So I'm going to keep reading this because I am home and I don't have to go anywhere for the next couple of days. It's also like a terrible weather wise. I'll be honest about that. Um, but I also have a little bit of a headache. I'm still battling a sinus infection. Um, and I can tell it's a sinus infection because the pain seeps keep swapping sides of my mouth which is really really nice um but yeah so I'm gonna read a little bit more of this um we did finally meet the second character and we do where we are getting more point of views than I thought we would which is nice so I'm gonna go back to reading I have a couple more YouTube videos to watch and I will talk to you guys in a bit so I did end up getting up to about the first hundred pages in Crescent City a house of earth and blood I am liking it it is just a bunch of information I will say that like she really is building a world and I feel like as the story goes on, the world's going to make a lot more sense to me. But it does have a lot of different creature characters and creatures. She is dealing with a lot. The first half of the book, she suffered a very traumatic event. Um, that sort of Bryce did. That is kind of like, comp you know, making her life a little bit more complicated. Her parentage is also a little bit interesting. Um, and then the other main character you follow is Hunt, who's an angel. Um, and he's sort of atoning for some of his crimes that he has done in the past. Um... 
and I'm sure their pants are going to cross a little bit. Again, this is like an 800-page book, so it might take me a little bit. Um, but I am liking it. Like, I'm definitely compelled. I know this will be. This is one of the fantasy romances that everyone has talked about and really craved. I'm really excited to be reading it. Um, but yeah, so that is where I'm at. I'm about 100 pages in. Um, and my goal is to at least read 200 pages, and then I'm going to see what I want to do. Do I want to go back to Holopox? Do I want to plow through and read this this whole weekend? I don't really know. But my goal is to make some progress on it. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to read about another like 50 pages and then I'll give you guys another check-in. So I finished a quick update. I wound up getting up to page 150 in Crescent City, The House of Earth and Blood. I am really intrigued. I am always one that loves a murder mystery. I always love that. So basically in the first half of this book, the first like 50 pages, Someone very close, or several people very close to Bryce were killed, um, and it sort of shattered her life a little bit. Um, and then the second half of the book, she's sort of teaming up with Hunt, who is like, sort of like an enforcer, I would say, for this complicated world, and they're sort of torn to team up to solve this murder. The person that they believe committed this murder, that they were convinced, doesn't seem to have committed it, and the murder is still on the loose. There is a political... Sort of like the United, it's not, I, I'm, see, it's kind of like, like, like when the United Nations meets up and like all of these different syndicates are sort of coming together to have a meeting and the one of the syndicate leaders wants to have this crime solved by then and they decide that Bryce, who knows the main character the best, can probably help. So she's sort of put on the case, um, which I'm very intrigued by, but I am going to take a little bit of a reading break and get my work done. I normally do a lot of like R&D stuff when I come home on Friday. So that's my goal is to do that and like set my blog post, see if all my videos are filmed. I don't think I'm going to film this weekend. I'm just not feeling my best. Um, but I do want to do my blog and all that other stuff. And it's going to be like a crappy weekend weather wise. So that is my plan. I'm going to listen to the end of The Perilous Undertaking. And if at the end of that book, I feel like I need to reread it, I will reread it physically because I feel like I missed the plot in a little bit of that book. So I'm going to finish my like last hour. I bought it on my Kindle. So if I get to the point where I'm like, I need to reread this, I will. Because I, I, I did buy it. But I'm going to go do that. It shouldn't take me that long. I only have to do a week of posts. And I will talk to you guys when I read 50 more pages of this. And I'll give you guys an update on the Perilous Undertaking if I finish it. Just checking back in. I did want to say that I went up finishing the Perilous Undertaking by Diana Rayburn, which is the second Veronica Speedwell book. Um, I actually am feeling quite a bit better, which is good. Um, I'm excited about that. Um, so I finished that. I think I liked the first one a little bit better, but I blamed the timeline that I read it. I think I was a little bit distracted when I was reading it. But I am excited to read book two. I mean, read book three eventually. I also picked up Tweet Cute because it's just a fun listen. And since I'm reading this behemoth, um, it will be a nice listening book to read until I finish this. Um, I don't, I have yet to decide if I am just going to read this whole weekend or read something else, but I did get up to page 160. Um, we get, we're getting a couple more point of view characters. There's also a quest element that has been introduced. I really do like all of the characters and I like that Bryce has decided to sort of team up with Hunt. I like all the different types of characters. It reminds me of reading like a grown up version of like the Mortal Instruments series. It's very, very urban fantasy which I am liking. And I have always liked Sarah J. Maas's writing style. She's not, like, my favorite author of all time, but I do like the characters, and I do like her, like, world building that she does. So my goal is to read another, like, 50 pages, and then I'll give you guys another update. At that point, I'm going to decide what I'm going to read, if I'm going to keep reading this or if I'm going to read another one book on my TBR, but it's going to be something physical because I think that was giving me a headache reading any ebook. So I don't know. I'm going to read up to 200 pages and see how I'm feeling. Um, if I can put it down, I might. If not, I well, might just read it this weekend. We'll see. But this is my goal for the next couple of hours. So I'm going to go back to reading. My goal is to finish my YouTube queue. I also did join um, a channel membership for Peace Love Books. And I'm going to go to her live show tonight, which I'm excited for. I really like her videos. Um, she's one of the people that encourage. I, she reads a lot more romance than I do. But I like listening to her thoughts because... It gives me like goals like what I want to read and she really has turned me on to the historical romance genre which has been super nice so I'm gonna go read a little bit more of Crescent City and then I'll give you guys another update when I get up to page 200.
seven. I'm gonna wrap up this reading vlog. It was a very, very short reading vlog, and I only was able to read about 180 pages in Crescent City, The House of Earth and Blood. But I think that that's a pretty impressive thing, especially because this week was just a little bit out of it. I also did finish The Powerless Undertaking, and I think I'm just gonna do a weekend reading vlog where, like, I pick a couple of random books and just enjoy myself because. As much as I love this, I'm having a hard time focusing on it. I think it's because I just have a really, really bad headache. Um, so I am going to pick this up when I go back to work tomorrow, but at least I've made some progress. So I'm on chapter 16 and I will probably try to make more progress next week, which is more than my goal. But I'm going to go figure out what I want to read next and start my weekend reading vlog because this is when I would normally be getting home from work and I am feeling enough better definitely should be fine to go back to work on Monday unless something really bad happens, which hopefully not. Um, but yeah, I will talk to you guys for my next reading vlog. Bye, guys.